Well, hello there, Mountain View Baptist Church kids. I am so excited to have you for our online Bible time. And some of you may be wondering, we're doing this on a Saturday, and that is right, because tomorrow we are starting back up all of our church services, our Sunday school classes at Mountain View Baptist Church, and we're even going to be starting back up the first through third grade children's church on during the morning service. So I hope that you are going to be here, and I want you to be sure you stay the whole time for our online Bible lesson today. At the very end, I'll be talking a little bit more about the details of what's going to be starting up tomorrow in the future of our online messages. So let's go ahead and stop what we're doing right now. If you would, please stop and go ahead and bow your head and close Close your eyes and have a word of prayer with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for how good you have been to us. Lord, we do thank you for how you have worked during this time of the coronavirus so that we can still have our online messages to help encourage us. And Lord, I do pray that you'll help every boy and girl to be in a good gospel preaching church tomorrow. Help the Mountain View Baptist Church kids to make it tomorrow so that we can learn more about you. Lord, help me today as I teach your lesson. I love you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started here with our memory verse. And got a short verse for you today, but it's a powerful verse. And I bet you can memorize this one. And it's from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 9. Ready? And just taking a couple of words out of that verse that's going to uh, be the, the main thought of our message today. Here we go. The Bible says, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Think y'all can say that? Think you can memorize that one? Yeah, I know it's a big tough one, isn't it? Ready, let's try it. Here we go. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. 1 Samuel 3, 9. And if you didn't figure it out yet, this is Samuel speaking. And we're going to talk a bit more about this in just a moment. Let's try saying that in our, how about our telephone voice? So get your telephone ready. Here we go. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. 1 Samuel 3, 9. Ooh, that was a good job. Let's see if you can say it in your real deep, deep voice. Here we go. Ready? Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. 1 Samuel 3, 9. Ooh, that was a good job. Now we're going to put in our Mickey Mouse voice. So get that out of your pocket and put it in. Oh, I forgot to take out my Mickey Mouse voice. Okay, so good job on that verse. Give yourself a big pat on the back. Let's see if you can say it one time without the words. Ready? Here we go. The Bible says, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. 1 Samuel 3, 9. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means in just a moment. But before we do that, one of the ways we can grow in God is by growing through godly music. So we've got a song or two here for you. Be sure you are singing your best for the Lord. Ready? Here we go.
When I was just a little child, no higher than your knee, my mother bought a box of crayons just for me. I picked them up, I opened them up, I looked way down inside, and the colors they reminded me of Jesus when he died. Oh, red is the color of the blood that he shed. Crowns for the crown that they placed on his head. Blue is for royalty, which in him did dwell. Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell. I colored and I colored till the crayons were all gone. And though I've grown much older now, the memories linger on. And when I see a little child with crayon box in hand, I tell them what they mean to me and hope they'll understand. Oh, red is the color of the blood that he shed. Crowns for the crown that they placed on his head. Blue is for royalty, which in him did well. Yellow is for the Christian, who's afraid to tell. Afraid to tell of the Savior who died on Calvary. Died for lonely sinners Just like you and me And someday he is coming back Be our king And the colors in the crayon box You will see Oh, red is the color of the blood that he shed Browns for the crown that they placed upon his head Blue is for royalty which in him did well Yellow is for the Christian who's afraid to tell. So don't you be a Christian who's afraid to tell. Excellent job. Great singing there, boys and girls. Now it's time for us to grow through God's Word. And thinking of church starting up tomorrow, and um, of course we've been having services, but now we're really getting back into the swing of things. Going to have all our Sunday schools tomorrow and our children's church for the first through third grade. So thinking of that, I was thinking of a story in the Bible of a lady whose name was Hannah. And Hannah um, is a very, she was sad in this, uh, at the beginning of this story here because Hannah did not have any children. Now, um, there was somebody else in the household, and now this was back in Bible time. Sometimes a man would actually marry more than one wife. And now that was not God's plan, but there were actually two wives in this household married to one man. And the other lady, she had children, but Hannah did not. And the Bible even says that this lady would sometimes be cruel and, and say things to Hannah that made her sad because she didn't have any children, and she couldn't help that. Um, God was working in her life to do something special, and she didn't have any children, and they would go to the temple. And one day while she was at the temple, um, she decided she was going to pray and ask God for a child. And while she was sitting there praying, she had her, um, her, her eyes closed, I'm sure, and she was praying quietly, but her lips were moving. And the priest who was there thought maybe she was who had been drinking something she shouldn't have been drinking that was making her act silly and, and went up to her and said something that wasn't kind before he found out what was really going on. And then he found out, oh, she's she's actually just got a heavy heart because she wants God to give her something. And she was praying that God would give her a child. And she made a promise to God that if he gave her a child, now I want you to think about this. Boy, this is a heavy thought here, okay? She promised that if God would give her a child, she would, when the child was old enough, let the child live at the temple, which was kind of like the church. Think about that. Boy, boys and girls, this mom knew that being at church was so important when we're supposed to be there that she was even going to be willing to give up her son and let them live at church. Boy, that is a powerful thought. Man, I wish today that everyone realized how important church was. Boy, it's more important than being at the soccer field. It's more important than being at the football game. 
It's more important than being at gymnastics. It's more important than all those things. If they're going on during church time, church is where we should be. And thank God this godly mother realized my child needs to be in church. And she knew that's what was best for her child. And because she knew it was what was best for her child, she was going to even be willing to give the child to the Lord and let them live at church. Now, your mom and dad are not going to drop you off tomorrow and say, okay, bye, I'll see you later and let you live here. <laughs> but they, uh, your mom and dad, see how important it is. And I hope you're thankful that you have a godly mom and dad that know how important it is for you to be at church. Boy, that's the most important place that you need to be sure that you're at every week because that's how we're going to grow in the Lord because life is not all about um, this short life that we live here on earth. Life is all about God and heaven and enjoying Him. And we should be doing what we can to prepare for when we get to go to heaven and be with Him. So this lady, Hannah, knew how important it was to, for her child to be in church that she promised God she would let him live there. And God knew that, and God knew he could trust Hannah. So he told the preacher Samuel, or I'm sorry, the preacher Eli, to tell uh, Hannah that she was going to be given a child and she was so excited and in one year guess what God's word came through and she did have a child and boy she loved this child she raised this child um, took good care of this child and as soon as the child was old enough to be able to somewhat take care of their self do you know what she did she didn't forget about her promise to God you know sometimes we make promises to God that we're gonna be faithful to church and that we're gonna even us as parents we make promises because of maybe an event that happens that if God will answer our prayer we're gonna be sure our children are at church well, we've got to be careful that we don't forget that because that is very important and not just being at church but learning about God every day throughout the week so I sure hope that you have a time where you're reading the Bible and praying and learning more about God every day she took her child to the temple there and said, I'm going to let my child now live here at the temple. And she would come and visit from time to time and would bring him a, a new robe once a year And while the child was living there. But this child, Samuel, was growing in the temple. He got to do some of the, uh, the jobs there that needed to be done in the temple. And he was learning about God. Now there's a sad part of this story because the priest Eli, he had two other sons who lived in the temple and they were disobeying God. They were at the temple but they didn't have a heart to please God. They just wanted things for themselves. Um, they would be like the kids who just come to church to get candy and that's it. They don't care about the Bible. They don't care about hearing what God has for them and if they're not going to have something special at church like a candy or they're not going to go that, that Sunday. Well Sam Samuel was not that way. God knew that he could trust Samuel with a special purpose. You see these two young men here, uh, Eli's sons, God had a plan for them. They were supposed to be the next one in charge of the church. One of them for sure. But guess what? God couldn't trust them because they weren't doing what was right. They weren't at the temple for the right reason. So God was going to choose Samuel to be the next priest there at the temple, to be the next prophet that he could use. And one night, while Samuel was asleep, the Bible says that he heard his name being called, Samuel, Samuel. And he thought it was Eli. He jumped up, ran to Eli, and he said, Yes, sir, you called me? And Eli very sleepily woke up. Oh, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. And there Samuel was laying in the bed again, and then he heard that voice again. Samuel, Samuel. And you know what he did? He hopped right up and went to find out what um, what Eli wanted. You know, that's one thing that stands out about me, about, stands out to me about Samuel. Well, he was obedient, hopped right up went to the preacher, and he said, Yes, sir, Eli, you called me? And he woke up again. Oh, I didn't call you, son. Go back to bed. Leave me alone. No, that's, that's not exactly what he said in the Bible. But he did tell him to go back to bed. And then one more time, Samuel, Samuel. So he hopped right up again, ran there to Eli. Eli, yes, sir, you called me? And then Eli realized, Oh, maybe God is speaking to Samuel.
Now, back in Bible times, they didn't have all of the Bible like we do today. So sometimes God would actually speak to people in different ways. And God was speaking to Samuel. And uh, Eli told Samuel, when you hear that voice again, I want you to say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. You know, that's such an important heart for us to have, boys and girls. That when it's our opportunity to be there at church for God to speak to us, that we in our heart are also saying the same thing. Lord, please speak to me, for I'm listening, for I hear. And Eli uh, told Samuel to go back to bed, and once again, Samuel heard his name. Samuel, Samuel. And when he heard his name, he said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And God told Samuel his plan for his life. God told Samuel his plan for the for the nation of Israel and what he was going to do. And God called Samuel, and through all of this, Samuel is going to eventually become the next preacher, the next prophet for Israel. And he's going to be used in a great and mighty way. He's not going to be perfect. He'll make mistakes just like we all do. Nobody is perfect. But God called him, and God had a special purpose for him. And he knew what that purpose was, and he got to fulfill it. Why? Because in his heart, I believe he was always saying, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And boys and girls, that is so important for us. How can we live out this truth? How can we apply this to our lives? Well, I want to take that word uh, that the Bible said, heareth. You know, today we would say, we wouldn't say heareth. We would say hear. Do you hear what I say? And I'm going to talk about each of these letters here for just a moment. Because I sure hope that you are wanting to hear what God has for you. Tomorrow we're starting back up all our Sunday schools here at Mountain View Baptist Church. And we'll be having our first through third grade children's church. And I hope that you are here so that you can hear what God has for you. So what does that H stand for? Well, the H stands for our heart. And you know, sometimes God can't speak to us because either we're not saved or in our heart, we are letting other things take the place of God. And our heart is not right with God. So, you know, one of the one things I try to remember to do when I go to church is I ask the Lord, Lord, show me anything that's in my heart, any sins that I've done that would keep you from speaking to me. And please forgive me of those sins so that I have the right heart, a heart that you can speak to. You know, we've been talking about those different types of up ground back in January, which are different types of hearts, and I ask the Lord to help me to have a good, obedient heart that He can speak to. Okay, now what's the E stand for? Well, you know, the E stands for our ears. You know, the Bible talks about he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And we want to have an ear that is listening to what God has for us. Oh, we're paying close attention. We're not distracted by um, drawing and other stuff. Now, sometimes we do draw, but it's, it's okay as long as you are trying to listen to every word the preacher is saying. So we have to have ears to hear what God has for us. We're not just being drugged to church and sitting there and just thinking about other stuff. But we are listening for what God has for us. Now, what should we be listening for? Well, when I think of the A, you know what I think of? I think of our awesome God. So we're listening to learn more about our awesome God. Trying to find out something awesome about God. You have learned through the message. Maybe it's in Sunday school or children's church or even the adult service. Something awesome God did that makes you want to worship Him and give your life to Him. And then what could the R stand for? Well, we should definitely have the heart to hear what God has for us to want to, to see God work in our heart, ears to hear. We should be listening for our awesome God. You know what all those things should make us want to do? They should make us want to respond to God in obedience. We should be listening for some area that we can respond to God by starting to obey Him. So these, are, these four things here are things that we should be doing if we truly want to hear from God. God has such an amazing plan for your life. Just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about our awesome, amazing God and all the powerful things He's done. That awesome God wants to do those same things in your life. Are you wanting to hear what He has for you? Boy, I sure hope you are. So let's review. What does the H stand for? Would you say it big and loud? Did you say heart? Good. How about the E? What does the E stand for? That's right, ears. That so we are, We're listening with our ears. And A stands for listening to learn something about our what? 
That's right, our awesome God. And R means that I should want to respond by obeying. Okay, good job. If you remember all those, give yourself a big pat on the back. I guess it wasn't too hard since they're on the screen to remember them, right? Yeah. Okay, but now let's talk about one more thing here because sometimes, you know, the reason why God can't speak to our heart is because we've never been saved. And we're going to talk real quickly about those ABCs of salvation because Jesus made it as simple as ABC. A, we have to admit to God that we're a sinner. Tell him we're sorry for our sins and ask him to forgive us. Then B, we have to believe that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again to pay for your sin for you. That's the only payment God accepts for sin is when we put our faith in him as our Savior, repenting of our sin and asking him to forgive us. If we could be a good person and pay for our sin, Jesus never would have had to have died on the cross. But because we cannot pay for our own sin, the only payment God accepts is death. We have to believe in what Jesus did when he paid our death penalty for us by dying on the cross. Then he was buried and rose again. So see, then we will call on him in prayer and ask him to save us. If you've never done that, I hope you'll do it today so that you can start to grow in God and hear what he has for you. Let's go ahead and take a moment and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for how well the boys and girls have listened. I do pray, Lord, that if there is a boy or girl or someone who is not saved, that they'll put their faith in you as their Savior today and that they'll trust you um, as their only hope of salvation and their only way to go to heaven. Now, for those who are already saved, Lord, I pray you'll help them to be in church tomorrow and to have a heart that is wanting to listen with their ears, to hear what you have for them, wanting to learn about their awesome God so that they can respond to you in obedience and have that wonderful life that you have planned for them. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, I sure hope that you have enjoyed growing in God, listening to our online Bible lessons. We will be taking a little bit of a break here from our online Bible lessons just while we are getting things fired up at church, and we want everybody to be there. And if you can't be there, um, you know, there will always be some of our previous lessons that you can listen to if you happen to miss a church service, and I hope your parents will tune in live to our church service and listen to our preacher. And we do have plans to start something online back up in a couple of weeks. But for right now, we're just going to focus on being in church and listening there for what God has for us. And Sunday school starts tomorrow at 9.15. You can be there at 9 o'clock and see your friends and chat with them a little bit. Then at 9.15, Sunday school will start. All of our Sunday school classes will be in the church building and they will have the the uh, babies all the way up until the five-year-olds will be downstairs in the nursery area and in those rooms there. And then first through sixth grade will be upstairs, uh, close to where you've been. When the first through third grade will be in a different room upstairs, but we'll be up there to show you where to go, okay? Then after that, during the church service, first through third grade will stay upstairs and have children's church. Fourth through sixth grade, you'll get to go and sit with your parents during the church service for the time being. And then we'll have our evening service just like we've been having um, at 5 o'clock. So I sure hope you'll be there. So what time is Sunday school? Do you remember? There you go, 9 o'clock. Then church service starts at, you know what time? I didn't say it, but can you guess? 10 o'clock, that's right. And then the evening service at... 5 o'clock, and we'll have our 3 through 5-year-old class on during the Sunday evening service. Okay, boys and girls, we sure love you, and I cannot wait to see all of you tomorrow. Bye-bye.